Gina diode characteristics. And how we have to do is, this is a Gina diode. Okay, it is like glassy, glassy structure. And here there is a line. One side there, is, well, there will be a black line. And it comes, it, it is called cathode. And other side is called anode. So first of all, we will take a breadboard. And we are going to put Gina diode. And we are going to take 1 kilo ohm resistor. And we are going to put 1 kilo ohm resistor. And this is the circuit. So in this circuit, this is the Gina diode. The symbol indicates Gina diode, Z. This Z indicates Gina diode. So here in this circuit, we are using RPS, one resistor, ammeter, diode, voltmeter. So these are the components. So uh, one di this is a dio uh, Gina diode and a resistor. And all we need is voltmeter, ammeter and the RPS. So this is RPS, regulated power supply. This is voltmeter and this is ammeter. So looking about the connections from positive, okay, from RPS positive, regulated power supply positive to where we have to connect to the resistor. So uh, this is the resistor. So I am placing the resistor here. And for this resistor, in the same line, I have to connect this wire such that the resistor and RPS positive got connected. And from this uh, uh, resistor negative, from this resistor negative, I need to connect to ammeter. Resistor to ammeter positive. So this is ammeter positive. I am connecting from the resistor. So ammeter negative to diode anode side. So ammeter negative to diode anode side. Okay. And diode negative from diode negative again to the RPS negative. So from RPS negative. Negative means it indicates black color. Positive means it indicates red color. So from negative to diode negative point. So we have connected the connections. And there is a voltmeter left. And this voltmeter should be connected across the diode terminals. So these are the diode terminals. So this is the anode. So I am connecting anode terminal of voltmeter. And negative terminal to cathode side of the diode. Right. So the connections are over. Then I am switching on. And I am putting the current limit to max maximum so you have to first put this current limit to maximum okay after that i am going to the table in this table serial number rps voltage forward voltage across the diode and forward current across the diode so here the rps by varying the rps slowly I have to take down the reading. See, here the main concentration is with the voltage. So, by varying the RPS, see now the voltage is of 0 0.1. The voltage is of 0 0.1. So, RPS voltage, varied RPS voltage. 2.01 so here we don't need rps voltage for drawing the graph so don't care about this rps voltage mainly we have to concentrate on these two meters so by slowly varying for 0 0.1 0 0.0.1 the current value is zero next for 0.2 0 0.2 the current value is 0 so for point 0.3 that is uh, RPS value is 0 0.1 and the current value is uh, voltage value is 0 0.3 and here the current value is still 0 so slowly you have to vary like that so 0 
sorry, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and the current value is still 0. Next, so 0.5, sorry, this is it. So, for 0 0.5, 0 0.5, see, we have to concentrate on this. So, the RPS value is 0 0.2 and here it is of 0 0.5 and the current value is still 0, 0.0 only and after that we have to vary little bit that is of 0 0.6 now, RPS value is 0 0.3 and the voltage is 0 0.6 volts and the current value is 0 0.1. Now, the current value has started. Now, after that for point 0.7, see now, now RPS value is 0 0.7 and the current voltage value is 0 0.7 and here the current value is 0 0.4. I am still increasing, so the RPS value is increasing but the voltage remains same. So here the voltage is 1 point, uh, RPS value is 1.1 volts, voltmeter value is 0 0.7 and the current value is 0 0.9. Now, if you vary up to 3, sorry, up to 2, so now RPS value is 2, RPS uh, voltmeter value is 7 and this is a 1.7. Next. Now I am putting in 3 volts. So RPS value is 3, 0.7, 3.1. Now I am going to 6 volts. Still voltage value remains same and current value starts increasing. So if you understand, if I put even 10 volts also, 10 volts also, so RPS value is 10 and uh, voltmeter value is 0 0.7 only 7 or 7.5 like that and uh, current value increases to 11.6 if i put 15 volts 15 15 volts still the voltmeter value is 0 0.8 and the current value is 16.6 so the volt if you observe this the voltage almost remain constant and the current is increasing drastically. See, if I increase still up to 30 volts also or 25 volts also in the RPS, the voltage remains same and the current is increasing drastically. So, this is how we got the values. For 25 volts, I am getting 28.6 current value and uh, voltage value is 0 0.8. Right. Now, I am um, decreasing the values I am shutting down forward bias these are the values so from these values if we start drawing graph in the, uh, that is in the x axis you are taking forward voltage in the y axis you are taking uh, forward current in milliamps so the graph will come like this that is see at some point that is at point 0.7 to point 0.8 the current and the voltage remains same but the current is increasing drastically because it is a silicon diode so silicon diode cut in voltage is 0.7 volts so this is how and here if you observe for drawing a static dynamic resistance okay from the origin draw a straight line wherever the point touches okay then in that you have to take the voltage forward voltage value and forward current value. So, V by F. If you take this value, you are going to get static forward resistance. If you want to have a dynamic resistance, then draw a straight line which crosses at two points. So, if, if I draw a straight line, it is touching this point and this point. So, first this point, first points are said to be V1 I1 and second points are said to be V2 I2. So, what you have to take? You have to take uh, a small r AC equal to del Vf by del If that is V2 minus V1 V2 minus V1 by I2 minus I1 you, you have to take these values I1 value 
I2 value and V2 V1 value V2 value such that you are going to get the dynamic forward resistance. In the same way for the uh, reverse also the same thing from the origin to higher straight end wherever the point touches it means static reverse resistance. Uh, Draw another straight line which touches two points where the two points is said to be V2 minus V1 by I2 minus I1. Like that you have to write down the dynamic reverse resistance also. And now we are going to do the reverse bias condition. Reverse bias condition means three things you need to think, uh, you need to see. First thing is you have to change the terminals of the supply. So instead of changing here, I am changing the terminals here which will be very much easier for me. So I am changing the terminals of these two. So as I am doing reverse bias, first of all I have to change the terminals of this supply. First thing. Second thing. See, resistance will remain same, uh, voltage will remain, current will, volt, current will remain same and voltage also will remain same. So that is it. Okay. Now switch on the supply and take down the readings of reverse bias. So in this reverse bias, only two things, we have to change the supply terminals such that the current flow will be in reverse direction, right? And you no need of changing resistance, no need of changing diode position also, okay? So here, if you observe carefully, uh, slowly if you increase the supply, automatically the, the values which you are going to see is in negative, negative values, see? Voltmeter you are going to see negative values, current you are going to see negative values. So by taking all the negative values slowly by varying up to, uh, seven, up to four, uh, 7 volts, okay, you are going to get a negative value that is in third quadrant. So same in the same way, dry a straight end from the origin, you are going to get static reverse resistance from this point V2 by I, v, v, by, v by I and after that draw a straight line cutting two points this one will be set to be v minus v1 minus i1 and this this point is set to be minus v2 minus i2 and put those values at dynamic resistance that is v2 minus v1 by i2 minus i1 whatever value you got substitute that that is said to be rever dynamic reverse resistance like that we are going to find out these things and at last in this circuit so we have, we have plotted the graph volt ampere characteristics of a Gina diode and we have found the breakdown voltage point at reverse condition. That is where, where we are getting breakdown voltage point at see here. See at six, even though I am changing the values of uh, RPS it stopped at 6.2. So this is the this is the breakdown voltage point. So so see even even I am changing these two values it got stopped so this is the breakdown voltage so we have found the breakdown voltage point here and after that we have found the static dynamic resistance both in forward and reverse bias and this is the experiment Thank you.